All right. So I've been a big fan of your comedy for a while because I'm a big fan of the kind of, I don't know if you call yourself like a, almost like a truth teller like Bill Hicks and George Carlin, but also, you know, you're telling the truth, but you're also very funny. And I guess you've probably been asked this question a lot, but uh, I think it takes a lot of balls for someone I want to get on in comedy. I know you've been in death metal bands and, you know, if the crowd aren't enjoying it, you can just play louder and, you know, tune them out. But uh, <laughs> you want to be the comedian. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <coughs> Hello. Yeah, mate, what made you want to do it? Uh, uh well, yeah. I was in bands for uh, yeah, for years, years and years, well, from the eighties to the two thousand. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> but I just uh. I don't know, I was always <coughs> funny using comedy to distract mm. myself and make others laugh. And I remember when we were very young, <coughs> in the 80s, I remember one day listening to Having a Day when we first got Hello Waits by Slayer. And, uh, yes. And uh, I think we were sitting around, I think we had Bonded by Blood. That's right, Bonded by Blood, by Exodus and Hello Waits with Slayer, and we sat around listening to those. And then, <coughs> and then we listened to Bill Cosby records. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never quite saw the connection back then, but yeah, we'd sit around listening to Bill Cosby to stand up and then put fucking bond to buy blood on. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> then in the 90s, bands were, yeah, I had Presto, it was in a Presto, then wasn't very, wasn't metal, it was sort of rock. And, <laughs> and typical band thing, you know, you'd have times, periods with downtime, if someone might leave the band, you're trying to get this done or someone's going to do this, and it's just, because we, we watch all those videos in the 80s remember like Eddie Murphy and Richard Pryor and Steve Martin and then I just I always loved comedy I always just watch Blackadder and all that English stuff and then I just I could have done something else man. so I started to do some but drama courses improvisation courses and then I just went you know, I'm going to fucking try to stand up alright give this a go Fucking horrifying. <laughs> it's, it's the one art form that is actually horrifying to start because you, you, you can't do it anywhere but in front of a people, you know what I mean? Yeah. In a band, you can practice for fucking years and then do a gig or be in a play and learn the script. But stand up is the one where you just go, I don't know if I'm any good. Is this funny? I don't fucking know. Well, the only way to find out is to go out there. Oh, God. But I did it and kept doing it. So. That's how I started, just like anyone, I guess, you know, I just decide, yeah, I think I'm funny, and then uh, you, uh, that party of it, thinks, gee, yeah, fuck it, I'll just do it. <laughs> There's no other explanation for comedy. That's the, the one thing about, I guess, how do I start? I go, there is no way, you just have to fucking do it, you have to fucking just go, oh, fuck it. And then just fucking start doing it, because it's horrifying. Mm. I've heard lately, just in the last few years, uh, ever since this kind of social justice movement kind of popped up, uh, a lot of comedians aren't playing colleges anymore. Do you still play colleges these days? Uh, well, I never, here in Australia, there's never, well, I think, I wouldn't even be here if I didn't have a fucking mental breakdown about five years ago. I'd we'll still be in Europe. So I don't know, is there a college circuit? I don't know. I guess there was gigs in the unis when I sort of, Started in the 90s, but I wouldn't know anymore. But uh, I was supposed to get to Tasmania oh, well, I went to Tasmania a few weeks ago and I was supposed to do a gig at this student union bar there, the Student Union Theatre or something it's called. Mm. And uh, got banned by the SJWs. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, got to go to a different venue. So yeah, I guess I guess I uh, so it wouldn't be too popular. <laughs> <laughs> Well, imagine being too popular there. No one's really allowed to speak there anyway, are they? So. It's sort of funny. It seems like there's been like a real shift in dynamic. As I thought of myself maybe five years ago, I'm like, I guess I'm sort of a lefty. But uh, now what I say is kind of considered, you know, far right. And I guess even people like you, I thought you were kind of more to the left, but you probably couldn't speak at a college anymore because I probably think you're a, you know, white supremacist or something these days. It's, it's very like a bit of madness. It's funny you say that. That's exactly it. I was uh, 
especially when having to deal with children who are 20 years old, thinking that I'm some kind of conservative prude, and yet, in a way, I'm becoming one. So, uh, yes. and uh, not a prude, I just grow up and get understand more, but uh, without having any kind of political um, allegiance my entire life, I yeah, I was mm. exactly one of those people. I grew up as an outsider, I uh, had a traumatic childhood, I couldn't play sport as well as other kids in Australia. I didn't like school. I didn't like fucking jobs. I didn't like this. I joined metal. I found, uh, so I knew outsiders, goths, metalheads, punks. I, of course, in that scene, met every fucking one. Then went to anything, hippie festivals. So I've met gays, I've met trannies, I know artists. I've hung around fucking gays and trannies and freaks and metalheads and goths and outsiders and fucking drug addicts. Mm -hmm. performers and musicians and poets and comedians and actors my entire life and uh so yeah i've met them all basically a lefty never been a racist mm -hmm. uh yeah i didn't mind if you're gay i didn't care if you wanted to do what you wanted to do without hurting anybody else never gave a fuck in fact i was probably a little too extreme but now i'm like no 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 you people have gone too far now yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna start to manipulate anyone who's an outsider and put them into a box and label them a victim and then tell them they should start carrying a fucking a flaming torch of vengeance mm -hmm. to suddenly bring down the evil white man patriarchy that has destroyed the entire world with colonialism and capitalism and basically the only people in the universe who have ever done anything wrong and now they need to be destroyed and put in their place and all the small minority groups which we've wound up and poked with sticks through the universities and the fucking political and the political correctness and the fucking cultural Marxism and now we'll start sending them out there as psychological foot soldiers to fucking monitor the rest of the population who if they don't heed these fucking supporting of minority groups into a, into the whole then and then uh, phew, yeah it's time for you to be your, you to be attacked on social media or branded a bigot and have your life absolutely destroyed. Uh, all right, folks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so right, if you're a white person, you people you calm down and started to use the fucking <laughs> logic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, no, there's no way I'm fucking on their side anymore. I'm like, no. Yeah, as soon as they started saying things like uh, it's you know not culturally appropriate for white people to have dreadlocks, I'm like, okay, we're not on the same team anymore. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, if that's fair, then every black man should take his suit off. Yep. <laughs> yeah. If you want okay. it fair on both sides. Okay. Now that's 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 cultural appropriation. All right. Every black person take their suit off. Um, get rid of your cars. Uh, don't have computers. You can't have air conditioning. Um, no flying in planes. You understand? If I can't have dreadlocks, then you're certainly not fucking getting in this plane, son. Why are you not appropriating my fucking white man culture? <laughs> yeah. Of course, white. Of course, white men don't have a culture. As we've been told. Yeah. Uh, white, no, white men are just an, an homogenous uh, uh, mass that sits in their country, uh, ready to take in constant immigration, so that they can become the multicultural, uncultured people that they always were. <laughs> because their culture's got to be put down because it's evil and colonialist and, and bigoted and racist that can't have any kind of white pride that would automatically mean white supremacy but <coughs> so we'll flood you with immigrants in every part of the world that <coughs> put the torch of vengeance at their hand of victimhood and then we'll fucking and then we'll rouse them up to of course have pride in their own culture of course of course you've got to have such pride to be from Nigeria of course you do oh I'm proud to be from fucking Europe no 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 stop that yeah stop that supremacy immediately <coughs> they've trained young people these days to actually hate themselves mm. to hate their culture to hate what they've been brought up in right so in one sense they're traitors they're fucking they're a cancer actually SJWs are a cancer within the body politic and like a cancer, they try and kill the host. And that's what exactly what they're trying to do. Right? They want to kill the host, right? They've got to break down all its traditions, all its borders, all its morals. Because 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 the host country of these immigrants needs to be destroyed so that everybody can fit into this homogenous mass. No, 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 you're so wrong. 
you need a host country and you need that host country to be the majority. And then if you want to come to that host country, then you can start to acclimatise and accommodate yourself into that home country, which is exactly what you want to do because these SGWs are completely against colonialism, which didn't do things like that. Mm -hmm. It went to someone else's country and took over their culture and dominated them and put them in their place, right? Did white people do that? Yeah, they fucking did, right? And it's shit. And heaps of other people throughout history have done that as well. It's called fucking, you know, domination. It's called conquering. <laughs> and it's been done by fucking heaps of races on the earth. But white people did it in the most recent part of memo uh, history that most people can remember, and they did it with technology. So that's the one they remember and the one they've been promoted to. But, you know, it's exactly not a great thing to do. It's not cool to come to Australia and kill the abos that can't have any culture and fucking shoot them and put them in chains. No, you don't like that, do you? Well, mass immigration is the same thing, but done without the guns and the obviousness. It's just done, so eventually, uh, hey, fuck, there's fucking 40% fucking black people in fucking Ireland. Well, that's not going to work. No. That's, that's an invasion. Now you don't have an Irish culture there. Now you've got mosques all over Ireland. Well, I don't want to see mosques all over Ireland. Why? Because it's not a fucking Islamic country. It's a small Christian pagan country that can only take so many people. It's got green grass and pubs and wit and funniness and poetry. And I don't want to see thousands and thousands of, of Muslims on their knees praying and thousands of mosques decorating the Irish countryside. Why? Because that's an invasion. That's the destruction of a culture which is exactly what uh, colonialism does, but just more obviously and violently. It's the same thing. So, uh, 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 no, I don't follow any of this stuff. <laughs> you yeah, can have well, multiculturalism as long as it's contained. I heard they a pretty... Yeah, but they I call heard that pretty, racism. They call hmm. that racism. I heard a pretty... So I always use the example. If you've got a 12-seater bus and it's already got 25 people on it, then you can't pick up the hitchhikers. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm sorry. It's yeah. not a, you can't come in here. <laughs> I heard another comedian say recently Germany didn't stop killing the Jews, they just imported the Muslims to do it for them. <laughs> well, Germany's a fucking mess, you know. Yeah, it definitely is at the moment. <laughs> Sweden's a mess, Ireland's a mess, France is a mess, the UK is a mess. So uh, it's, it's, it's the Eastern Bloc countries who are still under communists in the 80s are the ones that know what's going on. And they go, no. Poland, Hungary, Czech Republic, they all go, no, no way, no way. Mm. And the EU's go, we'll find you. They go, we don't give a fuck, no way. <laughs> <laughs> we, just, we just got out of the yoke of fucking communism fucking 35 years ago. We're just, let's fuck, we're not starting this now. <laughs> yeah, definitely places like Poland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think uh, one of your most relatable jokes, I heard a few years ago, it's a bit of an old joke now, but you're talking about, uh, you know, see, hanging out with the family and they wanted to watch uh, Bert Newton's 20 to 1, you know, kind of looks like It the Clown, I guess, but without makeup. Oh, I guess he does have makeup. And uh, are you surprised like TV thing. and radio are still going strong when you've got the choice of watching Netflix or YouTube or downloading or the internet and people still want to watch, you know, ads every 15 minutes and shows about Border Patrol and all that? It's quite remarkable, isn't it? Mm. It's, I haven't watched TV since the 80s. Right? I've watched films and I've watched, but not on TV, like for TV mm. TV. Because I can't, I can't watch ads. I can't. Oh, me too. I can't fucking watch them. And I can't watch a film where every, especially in a country like this, every seven minutes, yeah. you put in fucking five minutes of ads. Well, you can't watch a film like that. That's not watching a film. That's like having sex and every couple of minutes get up and go and do some washing up. You know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And the fact, as you said, that there's all this on offer and there's still people who will watch fucking My Kitchen Rules and Bondi Vet and, yeah. and fucking I've Just Got Married to a Fuckwit and whatever they show the person. <laughs> 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 and and in and while they're watching that, I'll intersperse it with some ads about insurance and how men are horrible. You know, no, it's beyond me how you could still. That's why 
They're the people I call the mainstream mainstream. <laughs> like when I was in heavy metal bands and I started doing comedy, I thought that the people I was doing comedy in front of were mainstream because they weren't covered in spikes and wearing Slayer shirts. Yeah. But I realized they weren't. These were people who actually got off their ass and went and saw some comedy not knowing who it was. They just went and, oh, let's see what this is like. They're not totally mainstream people. I suddenly realized when I got bigger in comedy that there's a mainstream mainstream. <laughs> and they're the people that don't go anywhere that they're not told. They don't go to any concert, any performer, any film that they're not told. <laughs> so they, 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 they can't go and find out about a comedian who's good. Why? Because they have to go and see one, you know, we have to go and see one of these comedians in Australia that's off the TV. It's not really a comedian. We just put him on the TV and called him a comedian and he was sort of doing comedy. He's not that good, but he's very safe and boring. So now we can have him mm. on the TV. And now he'll go and sell out 20 fucking nights at the Melbourne Comedy Festival in front of a thousand people. And it's, and it's very frustrating for someone like me. When I, think I, get, I know I'm not everybody's cup of tea, but I'm like, I slaughter this guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah. not not like, well, smoke up your ass, but I think you're in the top 10 of all time. Right. Yeah. In my books, anyway, the kind of comedy I like. Oh, yeah, it's the kind of comedy I like too. It's just what I always liked, especially even in even in music that wasn't you know metals doesn't always have a social voice, but it's been it's real. If it's good, it's fucking real. Mm. And then same as Kate Bush, because people used to say you listen to Slayer and Kate Bush. I like Slayer is the same as Kate Bush. It's real. They do what they want. No one's telling Kate Bush how to write songs. Mm. Full on, it's fucking from the fucking gut, it's from the heart, plus she's creative as shit, she's talented, that's that's the same, that's the fucking same. And so, I can't just watch fake shit, I can't, I just can't fucking do it, okay, it doesn't, get, I don't know how they fucking do it, I used to, how do you just go and watch, I don't know, it's sometimes young girls, kids, if you see a boy band, but now there's adults getting... Watching, yeah. just going, going, we'll go and watch Pink or something. And I'm like, the Pink has some talent. I don't deny these people don't have some talent, but it's just used for rubbish. <laughs> I just go, I just go. Yeah, there's nothing. Well, how, how are you? How are you screaming and clapping this? Surely nothing's moving you. But they're the mainstream, mainstream. Because you know what? They're very un. They're very unimaginative. They're very unimaginative, uncreative people. And sometimes when they go and see, if you t if I did comedy in front of people like that, they would just stare at me like, what, what, what what's happening? No one's supposed to be like this, are they? Yeah. Well, for years <laughs> I've <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For years I worked in a factory in that, uh, which is bad enough, but they'd play, you know, Nova FM or B105 on, you know, as loud as it can go all day and you'd hear, you know, John Farnham and Guy Sebastian and I just wanted to blow my brains out at the end of each shift. Uh, <laughs> I honestly painful. understand your fucking pain. I was lucky enough when I worked in factories that they, they, for a while, let me just have a fucking, I worked in night shift and I could use a fucking CD player and I'd just sit there and listen to fucking Rush. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank God. This will help me dream this fucking eight hours away. But, uh, oh, I've been in shops where they're fucking playing hip hop or fucking some rubbish. Not all hip hop's fake, but I can't stand it. But there's all plates of some radio tap. And I just think if I was in here, I, I would have to quit. I'd, I'd fucking go mental. I would actually go fucking mental. Mm. I can't fucking listen to this. It's killing me fucking. It's killing my soul. I can't. Can't do it. Do yeah. you have like a happy place to get away from all that? Is there something you know you can just like to sit at home and watch the birds hum or do that kind of thing to you know get away from the just the idiocy of the I guess the mainstream? Oh, I just don't go near them. I mean, I'm still stupid enough to sometimes go, how come I don't get this chance at this and that? And I go, I know, that's right, I know. Especially in this country, this country is even. I mean, there's a mainstream, mainstream in England as well, but there's also a whole fucking place where you can have comedy going. That's what's so frustrating about Australia. There's just no in-between. You're either completely ignored or you have to be in that mainstream paradigm. You know what I mean? Mm. There's no there's no middle ground. There's no... 
and, and don't get me started because I can fucking talk for hours about this fucking country. I'm thinking about writing a show about this country, actually. Oh, yeah. I'd <laughs> yeah. definitely love to see that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Something I just thought, I was having a look at you, you know, some of your clips on YouTube and you've got millions of views on some of your, you know, bits and I wonder if you're a fan of Joe Rogan's podcast and do you think you'd ever be able to get on a podcast like that? Because I think you're better than a lot of the comedians he gets on. Some are fun, um, like I like Joey yeah. Diaz. Yeah, I guess you've just got to have some level of fame there, which I don't think you have. I like Joe Rogan's podcast. Mm. Um, he's, well, of course, you know, it's a great thing. It's, it's a great thing about the rest of the world, not the whole of the rest of the world, but say places like America or England, especially somewhere in America. You can have a podcast like that because why? Because you've got fucking thousands of interesting people to invite on. Mm. Whereas here, I so said, start a podcast, Stephen. Well, who will I talk to? Who do you want me to talk to? Someone to fucking talk to you. I don't like most of the comedians. I don't mind them, but I don't like their comedy. Yeah. I'd still talk to them, but you know, how many people want to listen to fucking comedians talk on a podcast in this country? Fuck all. Okay. You could talk so, to metal bands, I guess. <laughs> talk to some metal bands, but you know, they're not big metal bands, so they're good. There's heaps of talented fucking bands in this country, but you know, they're in this country. I know they're fucking pain. So. So yeah, I, I don't know if Rogan would invite me on. I like I like his podcast, but I will admit yeah. I don't like I don't like his stand up. Yeah, it's a bit average. I've lost a yeah. few jokes, but it's yeah. you know, five out of ten, I guess. <laughs> Some of these bits are okay, but he's not very. It's like watching a wrestler do comedy. Yeah, so, is, is it true you used to live with Jim Jeffries? I just was reading your Wikipedia and it said that. What's he like to live with? Jim, well, that was back in the 2000s. So I was in my 30s and he was in his 20s. So it was just we were just on the club circuit. And uh, he was fine to live with. He was just having a fucking great time. We were running around. I've seen Jimmy in interview. He goes, that was the happiest time of my life. And me and Steve and Jason and John Whitehead lived in a house and had no worries and just did gigs and made money and fucking got drunk and had gigs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Jim's all right. He's fucking like a good comedian. He's a bit nuts. You know? Yeah. He's a bit fucking... I haven't met him. I have seen him for a few years, but... uh. Any kind of comedy that's got some kind of some kind of oomph to it, and talented, and and he's got a bit of fucking neurosis in him, and self-absorbed. You know what I mean? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, he, he likes the celebrity name drop a bit. Yeah, he's pretty self-absorbed. He's always been like that. But I'll never deny the man. He's fucking here. That's the thing about Australia. See, I could go for ages. The biggest comedian ever to come out of this country in the history of its existence is Jim Jeffries, and they ignore him here because they're embarrassed. You know? Yeah. It's ridiculous. Never seen an article on a fucking GQ magazine or something in this country. This Australian guy fucking makes good, biggest stand-up comedy fucking export to the entire world in our history. No, they can't use Jim. Why? They're embarrassed. They're embarrassed that he said provocative things. Australia can't have that. Why? Because they have to have their home and away morality, which they think is the way they need to express themselves to the rest of the world, so the rest of the world won't find out that they're actually yobbos. You know, I don't know who, besides yourself, who is really worth seeing at the moment in Australia. I mean, there's some comedians like Carl Barron, I suppose he's funny, and Will Anderson is decent for a bit. Carl is old school, and I started with Carl. Carl is funny. Carl doesn't say anything provocative. Yeah, I like him. Carl is good. Mm. You don't have to say things that are actually of any kind of social fucking thing to be a comedian. In fact, that's not yeah. the point of comedy to begin with. But it's just... I mean, I like fucking... I like Michael McIntyre. I don't particularly watch Michael McIntyre all the time, but I've watched a lot of his stuff, and I, and I like mm. him in the sense when people go, he's not funny. No, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. He is funny. And I'll tell you what, he manages to make the mainstream mainstream laugh, which is a fucking hard job, and he does it without being mediocre. Mm. So, <clears throat> anybody that's never done comedy and sit there and want to tell me Michael McIntyre's rubbish, I'm like, no, you might not like him, but he's not fucking rubbish. I'll tell you that. I'm sorry, I really like uh, Mitch Hedgeburn because uh, he's very PG kind of comedy, but it's funny. And I think it's harder skill to do without being rude. Mitch Hedberg? Yeah. The guy that's Did passed away? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. Old, well, Mitch, yeah, but he's really eclectic and strange. He's great. Mitch Hedberg's great. Yeah. That's a fucking great joke right ahead, right there. You know? Yeah. It's fucking. That, 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 that's fucking fantastic. I like, I love Mitch Hedberg. Yeah, fucking definitely. Love. Yeah. Uh, I've only got three minutes left, so uh, your tour, that's coming up in... You've only got three minutes? 
Yeah. Oh, well, apparently you've got another interview in at 11.30. I can keep going if you... i got more questions if you've got time. Maybe I didn't fucking look at my email. Did he send me a fucking email? I looked last night if he sent me an email and he hadn't. It's very unprofessional if I haven't got a fucking itinerary, which is why I was still asleep as I was talking well, to my friend. Maybe people. they're not all filled. I just got told my time. It seems to be half an hour slots. Yeah. I haven't got a fucking other email yet. Uh, uh, I don't have an email with a fucking itinerary on it. <laughs> That's the problem with me in interviews, so I, get, I have quite a fucking good time doing it. <laughs> yeah, that's just yeah. fucking thought for hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, knows what I'm talking about. You do get some boring ones, you just go, okay, here's your question. Oh, yeah, well, thanks for enjoying this one. Um, yeah. Do you want to promote your tour a bit? It's in May, um, doing all the capital cities. You're doing the Powerhouse in Brisbane, uh, a few other venues. Are uh, you looking forward to getting out on the road again? Oh, mate, I cannot wait to do these shows. I cannot yeah. wait to do these shows. I love yeah. my audience. Mm. My audience have a fucking great sense of humour. I fucking love them. I hope some other people come that haven't seen me before and enjoy it as well, because it's not easy preaching to the converted, but I will admit that I fucking love my audience. Well, I've done gigs with people who have supported me here who have actually come out and said, your audience is fucking great. I mean, yeah, I know. <laughs> They've got a sense of humour. <laughs> <laughs> they've thought about things and they have a sense of humour. That's a good audience to do gigs to. <laughs> and uh, so I, I really can't wait. I, this show is fucking great. I've got far much to, more material than I need. Um, is it going to be all new material? Because I've only seen, I haven't seen any of your new stuff for like the last kind of couple of years, so it'll probably be all new to me, I'm assuming. Uh, yeah, well, I've done this show and lunch of this show a few times. I've done some shows in Sydney where I did this show. Just sort of just in a comedy store, you know, and by myself. And just like, just, cause I, here's the thing, it's very difficult. In, in England, I do 60 days tour, so I could start. I'd have heaps of work before, so I could put the show together. Then I'd start. Then it'd take me about a week to really fucking have the show oiled up. And then I'd be like, fantastic, now it's fucking really ripping. Now I know it inside out, I can just do it. Whereas here, the tours are so small, and I've got nowhere to start. Before I start, so I have to fucking have it under my belt and just get it ripping on the first night, which is more fucking pressure. And it's like, it's not as fun. It's like being in a band, you know. You if you're mm. doing a 30 day tour in a band, you know, 60 dates in a band, you know, after you've played in that band five nights a week for fucking two weeks, the band starts to change. <laughs> starts to turn into a fucking machine like you've never understood it's just now it's so in sync and then uh that's what happens with performing anything so it's, it's a little frustrating in australia we have to do just three shows and then take a week off and you do the other two shows and then take a week off i'm like i don't want that fucking week off i don't need that week in between that show i want it to keep going and going and going night after night so it starts to turn into this fucking just organic beast you know <laughs> But besides the intricacies of what goes on with performing it, I fucking cannot wait to do these shows. Yeah, and I wanted to also ask, is there any plans to, you know, put out a DVD or a Netflix well, special or some yeah, kind of recording? I did the show last year, oh, fuck, years ago now, where I did the show about having depression for fucking so long. And so I, did, I recorded that, but then, you know, I still had to get off psych meds and fucking heal the depression and fucking deal with all that rubbish. And then it was such mm -hmm. a... So that took years, and then I've already had the DVD, but recently I've got it, and I've got the hard drive, and my friend down here, who's a professional film editor, said, bring it over to my place, or his office, or his fucking laboratory that he has with all these machines in it. And he looked at it and said, ah, oh, I can make this fucking heaps better. And I went, all right. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then my professional movie editor friend fucking recolor graded it and edited it and sound mixed it and fucking I chopped out bits of material I realised I didn't need and we fucking honed it down to this perfect fucking hour. It's not my perfect fucking performance on my new because I'm on psych meds and fucking dealing with depression at the time. Yeah. But it's a it's a good D V D to have in the in the collection of my history, the archives in the sense of this period. This was a kind of a period. So that is finished. Normally the best music albums is, you know, the 
comes from the period when the artist is most fucked up, so it could be a really good one. <laughs> That's usually, it's usually their first album. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not for Motley Crue, but... <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, so uh, that's coming out. I've got new merch on the, on that level. And uh, I've got uh, I've got other stuff in the works which I haven't been able to get ready for the merch. I wrote fucking about a 200 poems having depression to trying to explain that nightmare. And uh, I'm going to put them out in a book with sort of photographs trying to aesthetically uh, get across what depression feels like. So it's, it's, it's quite a fucking intense little project. But... Uh, I haven't got that out in time. It took too much work. My English friend is editing the poems as we speak. So she works at Oxford University. So I thought, okay, in the literary department. She said, "Do you want to edit these?" She said, "Of course." I said, "Because I don't really even know grammar." <laughs> <laughs> so that's coming along, and uh, I'm thinking about filming one of these shows for this <coughs> this this tour. Because yeah, oh yeah, this will this will be. You, you probably won't have seen most of this material. It's all new and it's fucking for long. <laughs> Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, and it's uh, yeah, it's certainly going to make someone upset if they've never seen it before and they're expecting to see fucking, you know, that type of comedy. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Um, yeah, definitely keen to come out and see the show. Um, see the show. Oh, be where are you? Brisbane where one. are you based? Uh, Brisbane. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, I might have our house there. I've always had a good time when I did that Brisbane Comedy Festival. Yeah, I'm sure. Bruce, I'm sure Brisbane could have some real hard, fucking boring audiences. But whenever you get the Brisbane people who fucking like comedy, I'm like, ah, oh. like yeah. New Zealand people. If you get hardcore mainstream New Zealand people, you're in fucking trouble. But if you get the fucking cool ones, then fuck, it's fucking brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll definitely be at the show, and if I see you there, I'll come say hi. All right. No worries. I'll be at the merch desk after. So totally. So good day. What's your name again? Levi. Levi, all right, brother. Yeah, all right, thanks very much, Steve. I've got someone at the door now, so I better head oh, off. No worries, man. Thank you. Catch